Grandma's 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 Grandma's
and um, make three quarters of a cup of orange juice that's needed in the recipe. And I was driving the pulp of the orange in too, all of those remnants, it's all great. Anyway, so why don't we get started? I'm gonna wash my hands and I'm gonna set the oven. It's a 400 degree oven. So I, I, once you get into those higher temperatures, you really wanna watch the, uh, it's 16, 17 minutes, I believe, um, we put the recipe here. Yeah, 16 or 17 minutes, uh, but just, just watch it, you know, just in case your oven is just hotter or, or different than, than what mine, mine works at around the 16 minute mark. It's just fine. And the other thing, uh, for your, your muffin tin, um, you can use the, the muffin liners. That's just absolutely fine if, you, if you'd rather do that. But per, a personal preference of mine is to just spray the muffin tin um, with, with cooking spray because uh, I just, I really like the, the, uh, the edge of the muffin and the bottom of the muffin. It just, it's, it's a preference. So you do what you want to do, but I'll be spraying my pan very shortly. Uh, Shirley Landry's birthday. Hi. <laughs> oh, Saltscapes Magazine. Yes, I, um, I did a little interview on Saltscapes Magazine back in, I don't know when that was. Uh, Shelly Cameron, I don't remember her, her married name. She lives in Antigonish, but yeah, she, we had a really nice conversation on the phone, so I can't wait to see that article. And uh, yes, and I shared the one from Tell Ill, uh, was there in early March, uh, just, gosh, who, who knew that this would bring all this media attention? It's just, it's, it's fun and it's nice and it's just, uh, it makes you feel wonderful. And I don't know, I, I almost see this, you might think I'm crazy, but in your lifetime, you know, you're supposed to uh, be charitable, right? how you live your life, you live a good, try to live a good life, your best life, and you try to be charitable. And uh, by doing this, I, 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 it's, you're allowing me to be charitable. So there you go. Thank you, thank you. And all of this attention is, is, is wonderful. And it, it's hard to accept praise and all of that. I think that's built into uh, Maritimers or we're, we're always apologizing or we're just say, Go away with you. <laughs> so anyway, here we go. If you heard that music at the beginning, that was Mac Morin on the piano and his beautiful CD that I love to listen to. Okay, I'm gonna get started now. Stop talking or that person's gonna say you talk too much. <laughs> Wash my hands, set the oven to 400, okay? Hello from Sackville, New Brunswick. Charlene, hi. Oh, welcome. It's your first time. That's wonderful. And hello, Tracy McGuire. Such a, always such a, a, a nice person to have on board there. And I want to say a special hello to Holly McIntosh. I know she, uh, she had a little bit of upsetting news in her family yesterday. So I'm sending good vibes out to Holly. And uh, it's, it's been a difficult week here too in Port Hood. And I'm sending my love out to all of those people. Like uh, if there was a farm incident where uh, some gases affected two wonderful farmers that are in our, our area and one still in hospital after a week. And uh, another young boy was in... Uh, a, a dirt bike accident and he's in Halifax Hospital recovering and he's just a young fella and so prayers out to those people. And uh, a, a former Port Hooder is in ICU in Halifax with COVID, him and his son uh, uh, contracted that and the uh, son was fine and but the dad is, is uh, he's hurting and uh, needs our, our love. So. To all of the people who have a personal uh, sadness going on in their lives, we're, we're, we're with you here and reach out at any time that you need just to, to talk to somebody. 
Okay, I'm gonna put the camera down and we're gonna get started with um, our um, dry ingredients. So there you go. I'm gonna put it down. There we go. So I am going to put in here uh, two cups of flour. Two cups of flour. And uh, three quarter cups of white sugar. And I'm just gonna use my quarter cup measure. One, two, and three. And one teaspoon of baking powder. I forgot to take my measuring spoon over here. Okay, one teaspoon of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of baking soda. I, I know, but there's been some new people joined since I, I was telling you how I work with my baking soda. And I was conversing with a lady yesterday that um, was making uh, the, sh our sh the sugar cookies. That's just a half a teaspoon. And uh, the sugar cookies took um, baking soda and cream of tartar. And uh, cream of tartar is so expensive to, to, to buy. But um, you, you want to make sure that it's fresh. But she had made the sugar cookies and they just went, look, you know, you couldn't even see the fork mark and it was really fat, uh, flat. And so we were trying to figure out what went wrong because she followed the recipe exactly. But sometimes I think hand mixing our, our cookies are, are great. Um, I think she, she used uh, some electrical, one of those things <laughs> to, to mix up the batter. And sometimes it just whips it up too much. Maybe that was it. I asked her if she maybe melted the butter, the sugar, uh, or the the, uh, the butter, and uh, you you want you want your but your butter to be um, room temperature, not melting, uh, for for those cookies or for any cookies that that ask for that, and um, the baking soda. I asked her, was it fresh? You know, like I keep my baking soda no more than a month, and I and so when I buy it. I mean, it's cheap to buy. It's what, a, a dollar or two. And uh, I, I get the little boxes. So then uh, when, when, when a month is up, or you know, you can keep it maybe two months, but I, I do, I just want to keep it fresh a month. Um, just put it down the sink. It'll clean your drains and whatever, but uh, that's what I do. But you do what you want. Did I put the soda in? Yes, I did. Okay. Okay, I'll put the, this down again. <laughs> All right, and a half teaspoon of salt. Okay, and at this point, you'll put in your your uh, teaspoon of of rind, and uh, we're we're gonna mix that up. I'm gonna mix that up until the rind is is, is just mixes in with the flour so the, the, it's not all lumped into one place. And you're going to add your uh, cup of frozen cranberries that you've cut in half. There now, I think that's pretty much nicely combined. Okay. And uh, my cranberries are still in the freezer, so I'll grab them. So my cup of cranberries are all cut in half. I, I You can just use them whole too, I'm sure, but I think this releases some of the inside and all that tartness is going to go through your batter. So uh, frozen. Okay. 
There we go. And I'm just gonna mix it up with my hands and that all those cranberries are coated. Just beautiful. Okay. Now, I'm gonna take a separate bowl. And into that, we're going to put one egg. And you're going to beat that egg. I'm using this little mini whipper from, of course, Pamper Chef. I have two of them, and honest to God, I use them. They're great for when you're scrambling eggs, too, instead of dragging out your big, big one, you know. Whisk. God. To you, you can't think, remember the name of something it's scary. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to put into that a quarter cup of oil, pamper chip, a little quarter cup measure. I love it. it. Also, it holds two ounces, of course, but all those measures are on it. There, so this is I'm using what am I using, canola oil or vegetable oil today? It's canola oil. Get every bit of that out of there. Okay. And you're going to put your three-quarter cup of um, orange juice. I'm using the fridge. And if you can see that, I mean, I've got lots of goodness in there with the pulp, and it's great. Oops, I see a little piece of orange with a piece of rind. I better not put that in there. Okay. I mean, just, just your regular orange juice, if it's uh, no sugar added, whatever. Somebody had mentioned that, and that's fine. Just mix that up. And now you're just all oh, your. This is it. That's how easy this recipe is. You're just going to add that to your dry ingredients, and you're just going to mix that until it's combined. Here we go. Now, I did suggest, you know, in there, some people are just not cranberry fans. I do not eat cranberries with my turkey dinner, blah, blah. You know, I'm just the, the fussy one. Okay, I think that's plenty. You don't want to bleed the cranberries. But you can use blueberries, or even raspberries, I'm sure, would be fine. All right. So now, I'm going to spray my pan. And I mean, when you spray, yes, sometimes they're harder to get out of the pan, but I haven't had, I mean, this is obviously a non-stick one, but I'm still, um, I'm still using the spray on it. Spoon here. And, uh, This just makes a dozen. There. So coming up, uh, you know, I was like, we're, we're all at the stage in our lives after 2020 and 2021 that you wanna have something to look forward to. And I really thought, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to talk about 
travel. As you know, I've told you that we were supposed to celebrate our 50th anniversary this fall, and we were going to go on a trip. Uh, that's offered by Sandy Travel. And, well, of course that didn't happen. So now the trip has been postponed and we are going instead and we're booked to go in the fall of 2022. But there's more excitement to tell you about. So while this is baking in the oven, we'll talk about a couple of things, but that travel, my travel plans are going to be I'm going to talk to you about my travel plans. It's so exciting. So distribute all that extra batter to any of the places that you think need a little bit more. Okay. Somebody was mentioning on here that, uh, as they say, I'm scotchy here. I'm going to get every little bit of batter that's left. We have no need of wasting that. Okay. And um, that they use, uh, they have a recipe for similar muffins and that they also make it into a loaf. And uh, this could probably be the same in this instance as well for, with this batter. Okay, I think that's just fine. Okay, they're ready for the oven. And, um, hi everybody, how you doing? Yeah, I know. I love Susan Lundy saying I love a loaf, and I, I do too. But I love having a muffin just for breakfast. It's just something great. And I mean, I've shared all of my favorite muffin recipes with you, and I love, um, you know, the, uh, the Morning Glory muffins is a favorite because I love putting everything in it. And you'll see the recipes there on, on my website. And uh, another one I make is an apple streusel one. And um, the banana, I'm, I'm, I am going to be making banana muffins uh, in a couple of weeks, I think. It's, it's on the, I have a little spreadsheet. And uh, I just, um, it's got a nice topping on it as well. Just something, something nice and different. And it's great to freeze, especially, you don't want to be baking too much in the summertime. So they all freeze really well. Take them out one at a time. Okay, going in the oven for, I'm going to, put 16 minutes on mine and just see how they are then but you can always uh, test it later okay Just love that Mac Morin. He's so nifty on that piano. And all of those music musicians that they're not really getting a chance to play to an audience. I was listening to an interview yesterday. Uh, Wendy McIsaac, fiddle player, she played on the show when I made Raisin Bread up at, at Christus. She has a, a, a wonderful site on, on uh, Facebook called um, Cape Breton Island, the Celtic heart of North America or something. I should know that name by now. But anyway, she has guests on her show all the time just via, you know, the interview happens and then she posts it. It's not, it's not live. But anyway, yesterday she had Natalie on and uh, just listening to them chat about getting the feedback from the audience and, and what or, or going out for that encore and how it, uh, you know, just just drives you as a performer and, and, and you get that love back and it's you play better. And uh, now now you they don't have that and they haven't had that. Uh, and it's it's just so, so sad. So check check out that um, Cape Breton Island, 
Celtic Heart of North America, I believe it is. And Wendy does a superb job and uh, does uh, those interviews weekly. So you need to. And bef last week it was with Lucy McNeil. And Lucy was going to be a guest on this show, but now uh, that was going to be next Sunday, but now that can't happen. But we'll get, we'll get to her when we open up again. I'm sure she will be able to, uh, to provide some great entertainment for us too. Okay, I'm going to go around to the other side of the table and I'm going to put my kettle on. You'll be hearing it boiling and I'll set the tea and uh, we'll just have a little chat. There we go. So I am going to turn Mac off here and uh, it's always nice to to, sh to share with you because you're here for a visit. Oh, that lamp in the in the background is that? bothering you guys. There we go. I'm going to go turn that lamp off. So I hope you put your kettle on and we can have a cup of tea together and, and, uh, and a muffin. I love how you guys will chat. I can tell you're chatting with one another. Somebody's thanking somebody for giving some information. And that's, that's what this should encourage. If you were here in person, we'd all be, wouldn't be able to hear ourselves over one another. We're just talking and gabbing. It's wonderful. <laughs> I know. So anyway, um, before I talk about my, my travel plans, I, I want to uh, share something. Um, I have wonderful friends in Port Hawkesbury, um, Huey and Florence McIsaac. Huey I worked for, he was one of the partners in a law firm in Port Hawkesbury, Evans McIsaac McMillan. He, he and his brother were the McIsaac uh, duo in McIsaac of the name of the firm. And uh, Huey, of course, and his wife are formerly from this area. and. Uh, they, they, they tune in to the show. So hi, Huey and Florence. And of course, hello to uh, Florence's sister, Ellen, who lives in Port Hood and who delivered a little present to me, which I'm going to show you now. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? The McDonald's. And uh, <laughs> I tried to find that with the fiddle and the bow and the music notes. And on the bottom uh, has the, uh, the words Falcha on the bottom, which is welcome in Gaelic. And this sign can be, be put on the outside of the house or on the inside, on the wall. It's a, a wonderful welcoming a sign. And uh, it's Huey's nephew uh, who partnered with uh, another young man, I believe, and they have a new business that they started. These young people started this business last year. In the midst of a pandemic, they, they uh, put this, uh, it's home decor, it's, uh, oh, just, I went to their website. Their website, their website is www.cb for Cape Breton, CB Sign Company, CB Sign, S I G N C O dot com. So, CB Sign Co dot com. And uh, they're all, they also have a presence on Facebook. You should check them out. And they ship, you know, between Canada and the US. And they're doing great. And they, they do custom work and they have lots of home decor. For these young people, uh, when I mentioned Ellen before, who, who moved just recently to Port Hood, this would be her son. And uh, look, 
I wish them all the best and I'm so proud to have one of their products to hang in my home or outside on my home, I don't know. But thank you, Huey, just, just a gem of a man and so wonderful to work for. And uh, I really appreciate this and I will treasure it. And it just speaks to me, the, the fiddle tunes and uh, all of that. So anybody wants to check them out on either Facebook or their website, they didn't ask me to, to advertise for them. But I, of course, I did some digging when, when, I, when I saw this and this is what they gave me. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. So anyway, my kettle boiled. I'm going to set the tea. And uh, while I'm setting the tea... I'm going to uh, show you this. Now, Lord help me. I'm going to talk about this. I hope you can see that okay, people. I'll be right back. I'm just going to set my tea. So, um, Sandy Travel, it's, it's just so nice to have a, a, a travel company uh, right here in Port Hood. And uh, I'm very good friends with, uh, with the owner of Sandy Travel, who lives in Hawthorne uh, and, uh, here in Port Hood. It's, it's uh, a wonderful thing to have that because it just you're not afraid to ask any questions and he's so approachable and his name is Ron McCacken and uh, so I uh, wanted to show you show you this uh, I've been on some of his tours if you go to this website I mean feel free to take a picture of this uh, uh, little poster here but uh, I've been on, on his tours. And, and if you're looking to, to go somewhere after all of this or plan to go somewhere, you know, whatever happens in the next year or so. But in 2022, he has a whole bunch of tours and he is a great tour guy. He's been doing this for years and years and years. And uh, I was happy to, to just help a little bit uh, with uh, a couple of his tours. I've been, I think I've been on three now. Um, this was when we went to, uh, to, uh, to Scotland. That's taken in front of the, the Edinburgh Castle. I don't know if you can see that. There I am. <laughs> and uh, then as well, um, this is a group that, that uh, went to Spain. There's a whole bunch of people from Port Hood there, a few. And they're from all over, all over Canada, even into the U.S. Uh, you know, he can fly you from anywhere to Halifax, the point where you would leave from. So uh, there, there's, that's, that's it. Here I am. <laughs> we, I went on two of his Scotland tours and uh, my sister went to and Cecil went on one. And then we, uh, Cecil and I went to, uh, on the Ireland tour. And here's me in the real inn, um, Donegal, Ireland. And, uh, Everybody, the bartenders sing. Everybody sings. Guess what? Yeah, yeah, there I am. Can you see that? <laughs> and that Ron managed to get a picture of that. And look at this. Venice. Beautiful Venice. And uh, here we have uh, Lucerne in Switzerland. Well, you know, I'm going on that tour uh, to Switzerland and Czech Republic and um, where else are we going? Germany and Austria. So this is Lucerne in, in Switzerland and that's where we're landing the first. And uh, this is the Douro Valley over here um, in Portugal because he does a Portugal tour. And this is Vienna in Austria. We're going to see where the Sound of Music was, uh, was filmed and all of that. But um, uh, I, uh, 
I encourage you to go visit his website and look, see if there's anything there that interests you if you just want to make plans. Because I know that uh, following this tour, there's going to be a couple of days in between that tour and the Italy tour. There's only two days between the Switzerland tour and the Italy tour. Yeah, I am going to go. I'm going to stay on for two days and join the Italy tour as well. So, um, but I had, I, I, <laughs> I mean, I'm just overwhelmed by, by this idea. So, uh, I, I think I shared it on, he had, I had a Facebook, uh, post this morning that, uh, advertises the Italy tour as well. So, but I'd love to have couple of you guys go but I I wanted to um it's just it's just th this the tour in in Italy I, I wrote some notes down to remind myself um it's in October of 2022 and there's two nights in Rome five nights at a villa in in Tuscany you see this sign here? This is the villa in Tuscany. And I, I looked at it online and I, you could see the rooms. Oh my God, they're beautiful. And uh, there you'll, there's, uh, they're also going to places nearby like Florence, Siena, Cortona. That's where a lot um, of the, that movie Under the Tuscan Sun was filmed there. Uh, and there's winery tours, a balsamic vinegar tour estate and olive oil groves and uh two nights in the venice area with with uh, you know trips to the canals and stuff and it's it's basically all inclusive you know um with most meals are covered and uh you know there's excursions to here and there there's lots of local guides that join the trip and you can uh, there's lots of time on your own that you can use to to whatever so i'm just so excited i've only decided on that this week to tack it on and you know we all need to do that but even more exciting than that this i am going to i hope the bell doesn't ring but i'm going to read this try to uh, read this quickly there is a lady that uh, that is always uh, so uh just a good friend of Ron's now. She's she's formerly from Boston. She's an American, but uh, she Ron has been in touch with them and making all these arrangements. But I am going to get a chance to do a little baking live from from Italy with this lady, and I'm going to read you her email to me. Listen to this, dear MJ. I am an American, Boston area based in Tuscany for over 20 years, and I work in the world of gastronomy and food tourism. Ron McCacken of Sandy Travels, a dear colleague of mine, shared with me a bit about you and your Facebook page and website and compliments to you. I have to say I found it fascinating and endearing to see how you brought joy to so many people during the rough, lonely pandemic, pandemic months, and it appears you are still doing that. Interestingly enough, your spirit, drive, and energy reminded me of some of the ways in which Italians responded to the crisis as well. You may have seen the people dancing and singing on the balconies in Naples. Yes, I did. Did you watch that too? The baskets of food offered from apartment windows, the endless cooking lessons and programs offered in a number of ways or channels, and the coming together with the true spirit of making the best of a not-so-great situation. Anyway, I have been working for decades in the world of food and know numerous chefs, cooks, Italian mamas and grandmas and daughters and sons who live to share family recipes, oral and written traditions and recipes. Isn't that sound so much like Cape Breton? And, uh, and these recipes are very specific to both a region and even more specific to a territory within that region. And I'm delighted to hear that you'll be coming over with Ron and his guests in October of 2022 to experience and discover what we have here in Italy. I have a feeling you'll feel right at home. Okay, there's just another paragraph I want to read to you. I'm gonna go check those muffins. Take a picture. <laughs>
they're done. And I'm going to put them on the, uh, on the cooling rack and just leave them there for a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to continue. Um, perhaps it's a matter of the culinary culture that can be applied throughout Italy. Food is a way of life in Tuscany. What is so special about the region's food is its aura and awe. The fact that local families still haven't finished lunch when they are already debating what to eat for dinner. Oh my God. Cecil and I will be having breakfast and he's already talking. Okay, what are we gonna have for supper tonight? This, all this reminded me so much of that. Food is a way of bringing people together, even the most diverse group, for a mutually, uh, for a mutually pleasurable experience that never seems to end. Indeed, in my family, we often joke about the fact that we are already planning dinner while making breakfast. That's so true. Sometimes actually preparing parts of it. You notice this same culinary culture anytime you sit down at a table with food-loving Tuscans. Italians may be the only people who talk about food while eating. You talk about the food on the table as well as other great meals, what you're growing or how you prepare this or that. I look forward to welcoming you, Rom, the Sandy Travels, next fall for what I believe may be your first trip to Italy. Yep, my first trip. Prepare yourself to experience a place that will not only speak to your palate, but to your heart as well. I plan to watch your show tonight, it's five hours later in Italy, as I prepare dinner in my Tuscany kitchen. And then she says, a uh, presto. I think that means see you. See you sometime. Carol. So I, I, that, <laughs> that just makes me want to go even more. So that's pretty darn exciting for me. And uh, I, I've been, I've been to Ireland and I've been to Scotland and I've been to Denmark and, um, that's the only traveling that I've ever, ever done. And most of that stuff has been because of, uh, of, of step dancing where used to, I've taught many times in Scotland and, and also just one trip to, to Denmark. So this is going to be so nice to just go and uh, just be a tourist and uh, to go with like-minded people who are some Cape Bretoners and there's some good friends joining us on the Switzerland trip too. and. Uh, my daughter Krista and her son are going to. I mean, uh, yes, a, a lot of people who go are, um, you know, more closer to retirement or retired. And but there's young people going too. Um, you know, my uh, my niece is planning on going with her uh, her husband, and uh, my sister Bernice is going. They're they're going on the Switzerland trip, whatever. And my sister-in-law in Michigan is coming. So there's, there's lots of, of uh, wonderful things. So I just want to share my excitement with you. And anytime you want to plan a trip and you, you don't know what tour company to go with, give, give that Ron McCachron a call. There's his phone number. He, 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 he does a great trip and he's got lots of experience. So I'm gonna go pour my tea. I'm gonna see how these muffins are doing, okay? Just a second. I'm going to turn you around. Okay. So good. I'm gonna get a fork. Pour my tea. I got my good cups out, my cup and saucer with the rose on it. Makes me think of little Rosie. And uh they're so easy to get out. They don't stick. 
and just let them cool on the cookie rack. This is what I like. I love just the edge. And uh, I know the, the muffin liners, they're great, but I don't know, sometimes when I want to eat it, I'm losing half of the muffin. There we go. They smell amazing. Orange, orange, orange coming through. I'm gonna cut that in half. There. Can you smell that? It's pretty hot. I mean, I wouldn't normally have them this hot. So I'm gonna go back and sit down. It just, oh gosh, it's good. I mean, I love lemon, but the orange, it's so good. Let me have a big bite. Mmm. <clears throat> I know I've told you this before. Excuse me. My papa. <coughs> that went off my breath. <clears throat> my papa, if the tea was too hot, he would pour it on the saucer. <clears throat> and he would sip it from the saucer. It was just, <clears throat> I don't know if it was a maritime way or a Cape Breton way. Pardon me. Let me give a good cough here. Pardon me. There now, that's better. Oh, that's good. I'm gonna have one more bite, and then we're just gonna look at the comments a little bit. Mmm. Your mom would do the same thing. I know. That's me talking and trying to talk with my mouth full and it went off my breath. <laughs> oh, a TV station picks me up. I, I, I doubt that. <laughs> I make too many flubs. <laughs> I'll have the tea instead of the water. <laughs> there now. It looks delicious, yes, it is, it's tasty. So what else? Yes, rhubarb custard pie, mmm. Our rhubarb, we have a couple of rhubarb plants and um, they're ready. The rhubarb's ready. We've already cooked some, just had it, have it for breakfast, just cooked. Great with some vanilla yogurt on it and a hot biscuit. It's really, really good. Yeah. And um, my daughter, Krista, who lives in Dartmouth, uh, there's a, do you remember me talking about uh, Daryl McLeod? He's my neighbor down the road and the jeweler uh, who makes all the rings and earrings, all gold and silver only and just beautiful stuff and he sells it all over the world. Um, McLeod of Cape Breton might be his um, website or you could search that out. But anyway, he also has this humongous rhubarb 
patch and he, his daughter and our daughter Krista went uh, to school here. He was one for, he taught with my husband Cecil. But he gave Krista a couple of rhubarb plants. And anyway, she sent a little video this morning. She said, look at my rhubarb. It's perfect, ready to be, to be pulled and cut and uh, enjoyed. So, <laughs> oh, good. She only got 11 muffins. Yeah, if you use the scoop. I'm bad for using my spoon. Tammy gave me, uh, I have two Pampered Chef scoops. One, a normal ice cream size scoop and the other one is, is a, a mini one and uh but i still i still go to the old-fashioned way of using my just a regular spoon <laughs> yes and as uh, ann mccomb she sends me lots of recipes you send me that uh rhubarb custard pie i might give it a try and see what it's like now that my rhubarb is ready ready oh so mariana simone your your muffins are ready and they're delicious. I love that. Holly, you you uh thank you for putting his uh website up there, Holly. Thank you. CB Rings was it? Dot CA or something. And rhubarb jam never had that. Uh, Jacqueline Mercier, uh, you're asking who to share the recipe. Maybe it's for the custard pie that somebody said. I'll I'll, I'll look at that later, but I'm sure that's what it is. Great, love rhubarb. Yeah, last year, uh, if you go on my website, there's a, a dessert there, a rhubarb dessert. I don't remember the name of it now, but it's the one where you put uh, the icing sugar over the top. Oh, it is a delicious dessert, delicious dessert. I made it at, at one of the shows that came from uh, at Brennan's house. And Lord help me, but all the good recipes out there and the good cooks, Rhubarb custard pie. Well, you know what? I'm going to try it and, you know, I'm not perfect. But you know what? I, where did I put that? Oh, here it is. <clears throat> you know, I'm working on my cookbook and there's lots of deadlines and uh, I have to have everything in to the publisher by the middle of June so that they can guarantee it to be ready by the mid-October when uh, they, they'll send it to the printer. But anyway, they already have the recipes and whatever. There's not going to be a picture with every recipe. It's just, uh, you know, we just can't do that because you can't have a photographer in to do that. And so Margie's making some of it and I'm making some of it. And my pictures don't come up to Margie's because she's, she's the photographer in the family. But we'll do the best we can. And... Um, what was I going to say? <laughs> oh, anyway, yes, yes, yes. So uh, there's, there'll be a couple of little uh, things in there about uh, Port Hood and Mabu. And so anyway, yesterday I uh, I went to Mabu and uh, to Sarah Bell and Raymond Beaton's. And uh, we socially distanced, was, you know. But, but she is a wonderful photographer as well. And she walks all the time in Mabu and she has beautiful pictures. So... Uh, I um, um, have one of her pictures of the scene of the Mabu village with the church and the, and uh, there's a boat and there's the water is so calm and it's just perfect. So I was getting that. But while I was talking to her, she was talking about this uh, raisin c custard uh, pie with meringue on it. Oh my God, does it ever sound good? She was formerly from Glencoe Mills. And, uh, oh, I remember her mom and her aunt, and they were just a treat, and they were just so spry and splashy all the time. And uh, they, um, then there, and Sarah Bell's sister is Joan Curry from Sydney, and she's just so beautiful as well. And uh, she, in 1973, when they were having a Glencoe Mills fundraiser for the church i forget if the church was 100 years old or something like that but anyway it was it was some celebration that they're having and it was for the church i believe and so uh they did a cookbook of and they reached out to not just the people that lived in glencoe mills which is on the back road you know you travel about 20 minutes to get there on a back road and that's where the glencoe mills old schoolhouse is that all the square dances in cape breton are on thursday nights over the summer 
course not last year and probably not this year. But anyway, uh, I had that cookbook and it had a blue cover and God almighty, I lost that cookbook. I don't know if I lent it out. I don't know what happened. It doesn't matter. Sarah Bell, we were talking about it. The recipe was in that cookbook for this uh, raisin pie with the meringue and custard. And uh, she had a next one, didn't have the cover. So I have it here, Glencoe Kaylee Kitchen. And I will cherish this. So basically I asked Sarah Bell and Joan, would they come with me when all of this Nova Scotia opens up again, come and uh, come on the show with me. And they're, they're both great step dancers too, you know, whatever. So we would have to get a fiddler on that day too and uh, make that pie with me. And uh, so I, I put I put it out there in the, in, in, in the world for, for Joan to respond and I'm waiting to hear if she will say yes. Sarah Bell says she's too shy to come on it by herself and whatever, but she'll come if her sister comes, you know, and so I hope that that can happen. You know, maybe mid to late June will be opened up again and that would happen. So anyway, I'm so excited and that's uh, when you said the rhubarb custard pie it reminded me of this recipe that we had yesterday and I am so lucky to, to just... Oh, and they reached out to anybody who once lived in Glencoe Mills. Uh, and there's people from New York and all over the world that, that submitted their recipes to this back in 1973. And many of them are long gone and cherished family recipes and uh, all of that. So that's great stuff. Okay. Well, to, to order the cookbook, the publisher is working right now on the cover and we finally got permission to use the picture of me holding the blue bowl uh, um, in my kitchen there that I use on you tunes and wooden spoons. But of course it's uh, now it's because it's, you're going to be selling a cookbook. It's the, the owner has rights and all of that. So we had to wait till we got approval for that. So, the publisher is going to do uh, a, a little announcement uh, showing what the cover will look like. They're working on that right now. And they uh, will share that with me to put on Tunes and Wooden Spoons. And um, uh, I, I might have some cookbooks at the house just for locals, but I'm not going to be mailing any out, I don't think. That's... Uh, it was a big job for the aprons and uh, going through the postage and then sometimes doing the, the vacuum sealing and I'm not like, oh my God, I'm, I, I, you know what? This, this, is, this is as good as it gets. So we'll be announcing it uh, on here uh, uh, and with fingers crossed that they will uh, get that to the, the printers the end of August and the printers need six weeks to uh, to get it together and uh, I think it's going to be a hardcover book and um, anyway lots of special things uh, about it and uh, I'm so thankful that you encouraged me to do this because uh, I, I really didn't see the point because the recipes are free and they're online whatever but I'm just excited to to share that with you now I'm excited about it and it's it's a legacy to leave with my children and grandchildren too and uh, I, I'm just happy about that. So thank you for encouraging me to do that. Okay, it's our little visit has come to an end. I hope you're well. I hope you're not lonely out there. And uh, you know, I, I try to answer every email that is sent to me or every inbox message. I don't, I'm not so good at answering the, the little posts in response to the video because sometimes it's kind of, it's overwhelming to me when I look, sometimes the, the, the posts are, go over a thousand or something like that. And it's to have the time to sit down, but I try to do that. But then I, but Tammy will bring some to my attention sometimes and uh, the other kids will as well. So anyway, I, I, if, if, you, if you need a friend and you, uh, whatever, I, I'm, I'm happy to be there. And it's, it's, it's great to have you as a friend. So, Anyway, our little visit has come to an end and uh, 
you really know, I know you know this, but I'm going to tell you anyway, every Sunday, I'm going to tell you that you matter to me and I'm sure you matter to a lot of people, but I'm talking to you right now, that you matter to me and I love you and I want you to love one another. And uh, it's, going to, it's going to get better and, and uh, we'll get through this together. So come back next Sunday for a cup of tea. Oh, oh, I forgot. I want to, next Sunday, what am I making next Sunday? I'm going to change it up. I'm going to make my favorite soup with you. And I hope that you guys will like it as my, I love this soup. It's a pureed soup. The only way it's going to get vegetables into me. <laughs> but the, here's what you'll need to buy this week. You're, you're going to need the, 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 the box of, of chicken broth. I don't know, there's 900 mils in it or something. Box of chicken broth. You're going to need a good size onion, you know, medium to large. Uh, you're going to need four medium sized parsnips and the same for uh, carrots. Uh, what else do you need? That. Um, the onion, the parsnips, the carrots, the, the chicken broth. Oh, yeah, you're going to need a couple of potatoes. And maybe, you know, whatever seasoning you'd like. I use thyme and uh, what else did I put in there? Well, sometimes I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll put something <laughs> in there. And, oh yeah, cream. I use blend cream. And uh, so I'm gonna make this, the, 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 uh, the soup with you. And while the soup is simmering, it takes 30 minutes, I'm just gonna make a pan of biscuits. And you've probably seen that a million times before. That'll pass the time. We'll, I'll just throw them together kind of quickly and uh, put them in the oven. It takes 18 minutes. And then we can sit down and have a bowl of soup. And just so you know this, I am a terrible vegetable lover. Don't do it. I don't love carrots. I don't like parsnips. Yuck. This soup is delicious. I, I'm, I'm telling you, it's delicious. So if you don't like carrots and you don't like parsnips, forget about that. It's delicious. And, and you need an immersion blender or, or you can put it in your, in your regular blender. But, uh, oh, it serves up really, really nice. And you could put a little tiny spill of cream on the top and maybe garnish it with some parsley or something to make it look pretty. But um, anyway, there you go. We'll see you next Sunday, and uh, love ya. Bye-bye. Um, hey, hi, it's me, Charlie. Um, if, if you, you like Grandma's video, 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 make sure, sure to, to, to give it a like and, and subscribe. Give it a like and subscribe.